Next, some uh, Ricada Law updates. I'm just going to read these. He's been in chat arguing with people. Um, he made a, a super chat at uh, Legal Mindset for $20. Ricada Law for $20 says, Andrew's criminal legal advice comes from a Chim Chi Cracker Jack box. He keeps one eye on the grift and he shoots as straight as his leg. By the way, I um I had been informed about what legal mindset does for a living. Uh, he was a property attorney in Florida, but he currently lives in Korea, and he runs a business that is just like expat like waifu tourism. You you contact his business and you say, "Look, I'm super in to Laotian girls. I gotta get some Laos Laosasi right fucking now." And what he does is he, for the fee, will arrange for your visa and try to get you hooked up with, like, uh, or in, like, a dating pool in that country of your of your choosing. <clears throat> so that's, like, his entire business model. Um, so if you are really, really into Laotian girls, uh, legal mindset has you hooked up. Um, I, I feel like I have to shill for him a little bit because he gave me my affidavit. This is me advertising his waifu business is a part of <laughs> this is my thank you for for um there there was at least how many people are thirty four hundred there's at least one of you who is looking up legal minds legal mindset uh Korean waifussy right now uh, trying to figure out how to get into that. That's how that's how the affiliate program works. I uh, was just arguing with people. He's just being a dickhead. I don't even want to read these. Fuck him. I made an announcement saying, working on a new studio and revitalizing the show. Here's a new chat. This was already making typos. It sounds like he's fucked up. When the show comes back, there's going to be a new look and slightly different feel. I think you'll like it. I know most people want, but it'll become comfy over time. Planning the kickoff show and getting in a good place to speak about the world without speaking about my case should be very soon. Also, taking the opportunity to shift to a more daytime schedule, but I will still have stuff for my nighttime people. Hope to see you guys soon. Thank you for the... Sorry for the absence as I put a bunch of pieces back together. So, he's setting up a new studio, which has left a lot of people wondering if he is separated from Kayla. And... um apparently his studio remodel is to like get rid of all the alcohol and he wants to remove alcohol as a theme because I think, um, so there's some, some confusion over this and I'm trying to recall this to the best of my ability. Um, last time I spoke, I mentioned that he posted unconditional bail, but Kayla did not. Uh, that was a clerical error. They both posted unconditional bail. So he put out $10,000 for the bondsman's premium, but, um, <clears throat> He is $90,000 in debt to the bondsman and to the court. Uh, so he has to uh, obey the terms of his release. Um, there are some conditions. I believe, if I remember correctly, that on his bond paper, um, he has to remain sober even if he had unconditional bond. So the other conditions of bond don't apply uh, which could involve no contact with April. Um, it could involve um, having to move to a different place, They're having to do P tests for drugs. There are lots of conditions that they wanted to apply, but $50,000 gets rid of all that. However, I am pretty sur sure that the bond explicitly said he must remain sober, even if he had unconditional release. So that is always a condition. So he has to like change his studio. Um, and I think it says he can't even possess it. So I think the bondsman had to literally come to his house and just completely wipe all the alcohol out of that room. All the bottles that he had stacked up are, are just gone. The PD is, is processing them. They're in evidence. They're being processed very thoroughly. The police are going to be taking care of all that alcohol that he had. Um, so he's trying to figure out what to do. And I imagine, like, I don't know what his financials is like. You know, there's all sorts of speculation that he's a trust fund baby. He has no money issues whatsoever. And then there's the side that um, he he claims that he is very much self-supported by his YouTube income. Um, so it's like, does is he actually hurting for money? Um, if so, is he, like, really facing this, like, I've been doing the drunk hedonism thing for, like, a year now? Am I really going to be sober on stream? How do I do that? Like, it's in a really awkward position. It's like, 
If you told me that I couldn't um, lazily show a browser and and change my and use the same wallpaper for every stream, I'd be like, "What the fuck am I gonna do? My life is in tatters. <laughs> how am I gonna, how am I gonna show the shit I'm talking about on screen? And this is fucking over. It's so fucking over, chat. I, I would I would be at a complete and total loss. So Rakita's in kind of a similar position. It's like, well, now that alcohol isn't a part of my stream anymore, what the fuck is my stream? <laughs> um. So we'll see. His case... Is, oh, by the way, there's one other thing. Um, we all laughed about Judge Fisher, the woman with the vagina alcohol being um, his judge. Uh, he asked for a new judge, and so did Kayla. Um, there are two interesting things about this. First of all, there's apparently in Minnesota law um, a rule that Hardin thought at first was just for civil cases, but actually applies to criminal cases as well. You can ask for a new judge, no questions asked, one time. So he saw that he had Judge Fisher and that he had shit talked Judge Fisher and he asked for a recusal. And I think that's automatically granted um, th because that's just how it works. No questions asked. One new judge replacement, which is um, new judge is worse for him. Really? Who's the new judge? What's the lore with that? I don't. That's news to me. Uh, he got rid of uh, Judge Fisher through the, the Mulligan rule. But what? I didn't hear that the new judge is worse. A black woman. She like okay, you don't want me? Uh La Quanda Chanel Durrell from Minneapolis gonna be and she gonna be driving two hours out here to preside over your case as a visiting judge. And she don't take no shit from no white boy. <laughs> you wanna get rid of Judge Fisher? Well Shanique was coming, baby. <laughs> Shanique was coming, she got her nails did. She got her hair and nails did just for you, Ricada. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she <laughs> um <laughs> that's funny <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry my mental image of this woman is probably much 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 funnier than the reality but I'm thinking like TSA agent from Atlanta, Georgia, <laughs> is is presiding over this here case. Um, I, I I bet you that the reality is probably not so funny. If it is funny, I'll laugh at it next stream too because that's pretty great. Um, okay. So the other one was that she he got to replace the judge. There was the other interesting thing where oh, so Rikeda filed um for the new judge and Kayla filed for the new a new judge as well but her filing was even though they were identical filings in every way except for the name and the signature um kayla kayla's filing was was submitted pro se so rakeda was not her attorney um which means that he might have either freaked out or gotten dinged by the bar association for representing a co-defendant, which is, as I mentioned in the previous stream, it probably a serious ethical violation. Um, so the theory is, is that he realized how bad it was that he was representing his co-defendant in some capacity and uh, had her submit that filing pro se. And there is, um, there is a gray area. I've asked about this before, too. If... Um, a lawyer can ghostwrite a pro se litigant's defense. This has happened a couple times where um, like a pro se litigant gets into a, uh, a legal battle with somebody uh, that somebody else really hates. That happens to be a lawyer. And instead of just representing that guy and involving himself in the case, he will ghostwrite all the proceed all the case uh, files for this to remain anonymous. And the guy just files these pro se, even though he has a lawyer drafting his arguments. This is, it depends on the jurisdiction, but in most areas, it's actually a gray area where it's not expressly prohibited or permitted. And um, it may be possible, and this might be Rakeda's, you know, fucking 10 million IQ move, is that he's just going to represent Kayla, but not officially represent her. And he, she's going to um, file all his ghostwritten motions. Um, as a pro se. So if he's doing that, that's crazy. Um, I don't know that that might be even more of an eth ethical malaise than um, <laughs> just representing her, you know, like you're representing this woman who's your co-defendant and you know 
that what you're doing is wrong because you aren't representing her officially, but you're still doing it and you're having her file it pro se. Like, that might be even worse. Uh, so we'll see. Thanks for watching this clip. This is Willow. Remember to like and subscribe.